In a hobby so niche, driven vastly by figures within the community, there aren't many who stick out to me as sharply as AI03. A designer who has produced boards that still remain endgame for many in the hobby, as well as provided resources to make designing easier, giving rise to a whole new generation of keyboard designers. In our small pocket of the internet, we don't have any wiki pages or celebrity birthdays. Tejas is March 17th, 1995 by the way. So I wanted to make this the start of a series that highlights some of the great designers we have in the space, their origin story in the hobby, and some of the great things that have come to fruition as a result of them. So who better to start with than AI03? Probably best known for the Vega, don't worry, we'll get into that. AIO3 is a Japanese designer who has been floating around the forum since early on in the hobby. His first design for production didn't get posted on Geek Hack as an IC until 2017. This was the 40% board called the Contra, which is in collaboration with Cartel Keyboards. The following years, he did a number of other collaborations, including boards with one of my favorite designers, Ion Keyboards. These were the Equinox and the Equinox XL in a 40 and 50% form factor, respectively. Some of his other notable collaborations include the Meridian, which was an ergonomic 60% design. This was a collaboration with Prime Keyboards and was based on the Prime E, being an ergonomic 40% keyboard, which to the eye looks pretty similar to the Alice layout we all know so well by now. This had an 8 degree bend of the alphas as opposed to the 12 degree bend that you get with Urisu or Alice style keyboards. This gives you a good ergonomic feel, but isn't as drastic as the Alice slant someone who may have never used the layout before. I assume the transition between the two would be far more linear as well. I know when I go from Urisu back to a standard answer layout, I'm typing like an old lady on a smartphone. The collaboration which is probably the most interesting to me is the KBD 8X Mark II in collaboration with KBD fans. Another interesting collab shortly after was the KBD 67 Mark II in collaboration with, you guessed it, KBD fans. As a predecessor to the immensely popular KBD 67 Lite, the board was definitely strong in its time and another of many collaborations AIO3 has had with big companies within the keyboard space, but we'll revisit that a little bit later on. If we look at his other notable releases, the first one that springs to mind is the Vega. Improving on the game-changing Polaris, the Vega took the design language and affordable price tag and improved on this while adopting a 65% form factor. The Vega offered a stainless steel weight, a screwless design, and acoustics that many in the hobby still really enjoy to this day. The Vega also so released with a thousand units in stock. Something unheard of nowadays, let alone back in 2020. Following the same day sellout in November of that year, the ball got listed up for an unlimited group buy, of which the unit started shipping in batches throughout 2022. At the end of 2021, the Polaris V2 was announced, taking lessons learned from the Vega but bringing it back to its roots in the 60% form factor. This is a board that I'm definitely looking forward to this coming year. His reference series aside, he's designed and released a number of more premium boards, retaining his design language but presenting them in a number of different layouts. Two that are very interesting to me are the Luna and the Luna 2. These were boards that were designed around the curved keycap profile of the original AEK keyboards. Alps is something that a lot of enthusiasts have drifted towards since getting into the hobby, but the custom options are extremely limited due to the lack of inherent demand. Seeing designers put time and effort into projects like this is really great, and provides an easier gateway into Alps for those that want to get into it. Well, easy at the cost of $350, but you're already deep into this hobby. What's another $350 on the credit card, eh? Moving back to MX style switches, balls like the Andromeda provided premium aesthetics in the TKL form factor. I mean, look at that side profile. Ugh. The Vector, which was published towards the end of last year, takes its aesthetics from the hobby's roots, in a vintage-inspired case sporting large bezels, a pen rail, and a beautiful weight. Going past keyboards, but sticking with the vintage theme, AIO3 has designed two different key sets, being the Simple Jar and the Modern Jar. Both of these sets attempted to recreate the vintage cross-positioned legends which were common on many vintage Japanese keyboards, doing so in both a black on white and a classic beige colorway. By now, you guys should know I have a soft spot in my heart for vintage-inspired sets, and key sets like this where hours of research have gone into the position of the legending in an attempt to recreate an old set that we otherwise would never have access to is something that I find really sick. Extras for Simple Jar R2 have just gone out for vendors, so if you're interested you might be able to still pick the set up, although it's pretty slim pickings at this point. I could stop the video here and you'd probably be satisfied, right? But we ain't even at the good bits yet. Past his intricate designs and vintage inspired sets, AIO3 has used his knowledge to provide resources to better help the community as a whole. You know that door board that sits in the top of your keyboard? Yep, the one you're using right now. AIO3. Along with other big names like Heine, Wilbertech, and Gondolindrum, the Unified Daughter Board project came into existence in 2019 in order to standardize the USB daughter boards used in the hobby, but condensing this down into the smaller PCB that is utilized by many in the hobby today. Not only allowing keyboard designers to be more flexible in the placement of the USB-C, but a separate daughter board allowed keyboard designs to be more, well, flexible. 
Like imagine all of your 37 different Outlab flex cuts if the USB-C port was attached to the same PCB. This is going to cause stress to the port and ultimately isn't going to be very practical for very long. The unified door to board really gave a new wave of designers freedom in their keyboard design, allowing a lot of the interesting developments that we've seen in the past years come to fruition. Arguably as important as the unified door to board project, the AIO3 plate generator came into existence in 2018. This was first created as a tool for personal use, but it quickly became a resource needed by the community, allowing raw data from keyboard layout editor to be converted to a plate right in front of your eyes. This had a big upgrade last year when the generator was turned from a server-based to a client-based model, meaning you could generate plates within your web browser. Ultimately, the tool allows designers to have confidence in the exact sizes of the 70 odd squares that you would otherwise be hand drawing on your keyboard plate but it also gives options for a number of cutouts as well as fillet and curve sizings. Even when watching other big designers like Gion at work, you can see how important this tool is and it's great to see new designers have access to tools like this within the hobby. Plate Generation Society has contributed to a number of resources aiding in PCB design, including MX switch footprints and a number of other things that I'm way too small brain to comprehend. Remember when I spoke about big collaborations? 2022 started with a big announcement. AIO3 joined the Canon Keys team, doing so with a glimpse at an early redesign of the Brutal series. This brought Canon Keys Brutal series, which originally released in 2019, into the modern era of the hobby. Maintaining their original inspiration while adopting AIO3 design language, the Brutal V2 series have been incredibly popular already, with the 1800 and 65 being offered in stock by Canon Keys. I think it's great to see designers join with big companies to provide better in stock options, especially at a time when the budget side of things is so damn good. Balancing his time between coding and keyboard design, AIO3 truly has contributed an enormous amount to this hobby, and in no way is he anywhere near done. From daily drivers to modern interior design, AI3 has explored design in the hobby and I'm excited to see what he has in store for us this coming year, both for designers and hobbyists alike. Now I hope you've enjoyed today's video, if you have make sure to subscribe and leave a like down below, and let me know in the comments what designer you'd like to see covered next. Thanks for watching, follow me on everything, and I will see you nerds in the next one. Peace!